Good afternoon, wedding friends and family. Hope everyone's doing well this afternoon. My name is Heath Moxig. I am a Southeast Regional Manager here at Wine Inc. and I'm here with my favorite agent from Georgia, South Carolina Territory, Christian Kerner. So Christian, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and I'll let you to Mike and we'll uh, go into the, some of the machine specs. Well, I'm fairly new. I, I started back in 85 and uh, one of my favorite products that we make is the uh, Ryman Vario Rip 310. Uh, this is actually made in the Black Forest, and it's a daughter company of Weinig. It's about 150 years old, and we have thousands of machines all over the world. Moving Blade is a, one of our biggest uh, claims to fame. This particular machine is one of our midsize. It's got a 12-inch arbor, and we've got uh, two fixed blades on this particular setup, and then we've got two moving blades. So here we've got... Um, automatic with measuring. So Kyle is our operator today. When Kyle puts the board up here, the, the uh, machine will automatically measure the width of the board, compare it to the cut list. We have a lot of customers that use this technology. Flooring, millwork is very common. And of course, uh, I would say our biggest piece of the pie would be cabinet doors and random width. That is a big thing. The problem is they're buying hardwood lumber. And when you buy hardwood lumber, every board that comes in is going to come in with a different width. So you're going to have a, when you're buying a truckload of lumber every month or every week or every two months, whatever, every single board is different. So you have a random width problem. I like to tell customers, this is a random width solution. Every board is treated unique. If you give us 15 sizes with just this small combination, fence, two fixed blades and two moving blades, we can give you something like 100,000 possible combinations on the Arbor. So it's off the chart when it comes to technology. Christian, share with me a little bit. What are your customers doing now that maybe would provoke a machine like this for them in the near future? What are some of the examples? Well, most of our customers start out, everybody starts out with a budget pretty much, and they start out with a table saw first, and then the uh, natural transcript, or excuse me, progression is to go straight to a straight line rip. Once you start running a straight line rip, you know, 10, 20 hours a week, all of a sudden you start to realize it's becoming a bottleneck. You know, how can I speed this up? The problem with the straight line is you have to run the board back through, back and through, back and through. So you get, you get good yield, but your labor's killing you. And if you have two people, all of a sudden you've got 60 hour, man hours a week, this machine can do it in about six or eight. So that's the kind of difference in payback. The some of them sort, some of them sort because uh, like in the case of uh, architectural doors, when you're doing the big tall doors, your styles are always five and a half inches wide. So you want, you got to sort those and you're just going to cut the left side, the right side, and that's it. So I imagine it's taking up a lot of real estate. It takes up a lot of real estate and sorting, people don't stop and think about that. But if you're spending one, two hours a day of sorting and that man is costing you, you know, business owner, if it's costing you uh, 10, 15, 20 bucks an hour unburden when you burden that cost all of a sudden you're in the 30 40 50 depending on the customer is it a union shop all that kind of stuff well, yeah, let's talk a little bit let's talk a little bit our lasers and how that works and the setup and the infeed and if you want to do a little show and tell or we can just come over here a little bit about the christian mentioned a little bit about the width measuring so this is something that we offer as an option um, you don't need it if you have an infeed but I, but the nice feature is that when you set the board in the front it actually measures the width and that will automatically move our blades to the width. Now we do have some features and some options on the screen as well. So if for some reason there's a knot and maybe it's getting ripped in the middle of a knot, you can actually flip it and reverse it. You can change it so it has a different size. So you don't have to do it. There's an automatic mode and a semi-automatic mode that can benefit from those people who have really expensive material. And so you can either run an automatic mode if you're not too worried about you know, ripping for optimizing or defects, that's an option as well. Uh, Christian, you want to share with us a little bit about what some of the safety features and the chain and how does that work on the infeed? Well, if the camera could come over here, um, this is one of our biggest um, benefits and this is a no charge. But years ago, I don't know, six or eight years ago, we put on a, a little Kevlar vest. Later on, we'll open up the machine after we get done running a couple boards and we'll show you. But this is called Safety Plus. There's no upcharge for it. But basically, pretty much all the gang rips in the industry have got two or three on the bottom, two or three sets of anti-kickback fingers on the bottom and one or two on the top and then one on the outfeed. The one on the outfeed really is there just to make sure the edgings don't lay down and, and turn into missiles. Uh, the problem is when a machine gets old, it becomes a huge liability, a, a workman's comp problem, because the chain has been running and you got all this wood on it, the fingers will get kind of short and you have a little gap 
and missiles can come out and hit the operator. So that's nothing anybody in the industry wants to hear about any kind of litigation. So with this machine, standard comes Safety Plus, which is a Kevlar vest, basically. I call it a Kevlar vest, but it comes down here and it actually rides on the chain, so it closes up the gap. We've had a lot of customers invest in this technology, and the big reason is, I've, I had a customer tell me the other day, he looked me straight in the face and said, the reason I'm buying your saw is because if I ever have an accident and I've got to sit in front of a jury, you know, or, or judge or whatever, I'm going to tell him I bought the best technology, the safest technology in the world, and it's right here. And the three sets of kickback three fingers. Three sets of kickback fingers and on the, on the outfit. Now, another big difference, um, there's, there's several, we have several competitors on, on the market, and, and everybody has different engineering. Uh, we're not really copying anybody because we have, the pat, we have the original patent on the straight line, we have the original patent on moving blade, and, and uh, uh, single moving blade, two moving blades, all kinds of patents, basically. But... The bigger point is how much energy it takes to feed this saw. Everybody else's saw, because they'll start with the uh, bottom, top, top, uh, then maybe the chain. I've seen different variations of that. The problem is it takes a lot of energy. And you have to basically, if you're doing a big oak, uh, we have customers that make grade stakes, for example, silt fence stakes. You've got to take a big, wet, red oak board. It could weigh 40 pounds, 30, 40 pounds. You've got to cram it in this infeed, and it is work. I did it all the way through college. It will bust your knuckles, and you're you're worn out after doing that eight hours. Ryman, however, looked at the problem years ago, and they said, you know, there's a better solution. Let's start with anti-kickback fingers that are balanced. Let's start with anti-kickback fingers that are balanced so it doesn't take a lot of energy. When Kyle puts the board in, you'll notice the board comes in, immediately hits the chain, then we hit the top, top, and then the Kevlar. So with this machine, you know, in, in Europe, the cost of energy is... is you know, three, four, five times higher than it is here. A kilowatt hour over there is about 20, 30 cents, as, as opposed to here is about 10 cents an hour. That's a big deal when you have a seven and a half horsepower feed motor. On this machine, we only have a one horse or one and a half horsepower motor, which tells you it's easy to feed. It's not going to bust your butt. Does that answer your question? It does. No, thank you, sir. Now, I think when it comes to safety, it's our number one objective outside of capacity and throughput. So, which is our, our number one goal is, is to just maintain the safety profile in every facility we put our equipment in. So that's one reason why we mentioned the kickback fingers. Uh, tell us a little more maybe about the chain, yep. you know, up here up on, on the front side of it. If you can walk over this way, we've, we've got a couple things up here that are very important. Uh, what a lot of people don't, you know, you, sometimes you got to stop and think about what you're processing. You're processing a homogeneous, a homogeneous uh, product, and it's wood. And the wood, the wood is growing. You know, it's a tree, it's timber, but it's actually growing in compression. The problem with a tree growing in compression is, was as you run through a rip saw, as you run through a rip saw, you're actually the blade is releasing that tension. And on older style rip saws, you sometimes see bananas coming out of the out, out of the outfeed. The boards are going left, the boards are going right because the, the tension is being released. On this machine, we've got spikes, and that's pretty common. Uh, softwood guys don't get it as much as the hardwood guys, but if you're doing any type of uh, straight line um, gang ripping and you want to do glue up after, like for door panels, this is huge. These spikes only go in about uh, 10, 20 millimeters. Our molder will take it out later on downstream. These machines are designed for rough lumber so you don't have to pre-plane it you don't have to buy s2s you can save that 75 dollars a thousand you can buy truly rough lumber machine doesn't care so the spikes prevent any kind of lateral movement in the cut so this is a huge key of our success uh, these spikes are actually replaceable uh, they're hardened they're carbide i think they last on average probably six seven eight years it's not a lot of money it's a few bucks to replace each one of them but i've seen customers go 10 years another big difference is the chain is closed and what that means, especially true on lower grade, uh, number one common, number two, this is a huge deal because you're cutting a low grade, meaning you're going to have a lot of edgings. You're going to have a lot of garbage falling off the machine. The problem, with, uh, the problem with brand X or brand Y, whatever, the problem is the crap will fall between the chain links and then has the, back, back up a second, the chain is actually coming through, carrying the board. It's coming back this way. So anything that's falling down here is going to hit the chain. It's going to go back up, go around the big bend, and it's going to come in, and then it's going to get tracked it's going to get embedded onto your races. This is the prismatic guides, and this prevents the chain from moving left to right. And this is really the secret for the straight line, glue line, you know, up to 100 feet a minute. Yeah, perfect. Perfect setup. The chain is cast iron. Most customers, we, we guarantee it for 10 years, but, but you can actually run it a lot longer. 
Uh, we have customers who run 20 years, especially if they're only running two, three, four hours a day. Um, the biggest thing on the chain is make sure your blades are sharpened as a matched set. This is critical. I've seen customers actually color code their, their saw blades so they don't get the blades mixed up. Because if you get the blades mixed up, the first thing the operator is going to try to do is lower the arbor and cut into the chain. And that, that could be a, a mistake that's going to cost you thousands of dollars. Another unique feature is uh, this is the dip. So on a, can I open the hood for a second, please, Kyle? On a, it's, this is called a dip chain gang rip. So let's break that down a little bit. The dip chain, the chain, if you can, if you can get on one knee, Christian, the chain actually dips around the blade. The problem, the problem is on some, on brand X, brand Y, whatever. Sometimes it's uh, five, six, seven inches the dip. And if you're running thin material, the leading edge of the board and the trailing edge is basically a never, never land because there's no controlling it. And I've seen a lot of machines that put edge snipe, which can really screw up your straight line glue lining. So we have only about a three inch dip. So if you're running super thin material, half inch, it's not, you know, which is rare. But if you're running four quarter, we, we do it. We machine it perfectly. You can use the whole board. There's not going to be any edge snipe. Anything else before we run a board? Well, while we have the hood open, these are the, these are the yokes. So these, these big black monstrosities, that's called the yoke. And that's how we move the blade. So when he's moving the blade, can you articulate a blade, please, sir? So we're moving a blade in and out based on the width of the board. And that's done automatically based on your cut list. This feature here is, is uh, truly unique. This is another patent. Uh, this is called the uh, quick fix. It's a hydraulic sleeve. You can see the keyway. There's a keyway here and there's a keyway here. When you release this, both keyways retract and then you move the, fi the two fixed blades or on this machine. Right now, we only have one fixed blade. Most customers run two, but you can move the blade anywhere you want it and then tighten it back up. So instead of having a big sleeve with a bunch of spacers on uh, brand X, brand Y, whatever, it could take sometimes 10, 15, 20 minutes to change the blades. On this machine, it could take 10, 15 seconds. So it's all to change the pocket size, but it's all about technology. Um, I think that covers it. Uh, we do use almost a, uh, it's like a, uh, if you ever seen a mountain bike with a spring in the middle, both wheels will go like that. We do the same philosophy with our, with our spring loaded feed rollers. So if you have some bow in the board, the machine's going to track it just fine. No problem. Just like a mountain bike. I've, we've actually have a customer in France that does crutches that makes crutches with the big bended plywood. And you can see the feed rollers tracking the, the plywood. All right. Heath? No, this is, yeah, no, doing a great job, Christian. Thank you. Um, I think it will be time to run a board. And maybe we need to just talk about the control for a few minutes as well. So technology really starts off in the office. It can start with software if you don't have any design software, uh, post-processing software as well. So whether it's Envision or Millvision, we have a number, a number of different pieces of software that can help accommodate that, that piece of it. But whether you, you want to input your cut list for the day, you know, on here at the control, if you want to use a USB, if you want to use the network cable, that we can also do that with. Um, there, there's some great ways to get the cut list into. We, last thing you want is an operator in front of the control. You want the machine operating. You want it running. So the, the whole I, whole concept is is to minimize the time for an operator in front of the control. And so you can the, the cut list can be a variety. The nice thing about this, we also have an outfeed monitor we can add. So if you want to rip a three and three and an eight, that can also be possible. And that way you can distinguish the difference when they're being possibly ripped at the same time. Um, and again, that helps on your yield as well. But if, uh, Kyle, if you just want to go through a couple different things, maybe show us the cut list right now and how they would enter a different. Nothing specific, it's pretty generic for the most part. And so as you can see, Kyle's just creating a new cut list. And so we're gonna add a couple boards, just as an example. Um, here you would have a to and from, we could put a dollar sign on it, we could put board feet on it. So basically you're gonna be ripping to what you want. Uh, and the nice thing is it'll actually stop. It'll prevent you from ripping any additional widths after you've met that, that requirement. And Christian, I'll hand it off to you, and I'm sure you got some words to say as well. 
Yeah, the software is really the uh, driving force here. You can put in your daily cut build, and you can put in, for example, your randoms. Uh, if you're doing mill vision with the panel uh, module, you can do your your panels in square footage. Um, it'll it'll knock out. So, in other words, if I've got enough frame material, if I've got you know I need a thousand foot of two and a half inch, it'll actually drop it out of the cut list, so you don't overcut. You cut what you need when you need it. Uh, we're very big on balance cutting because a lot of customers want to have everything show up in the next department at the same time. So the machine's very smart. The software is constantly looking for what's going to be the best way to do this. Now, if you had a rush order, all of a sudden somebody called up and said, oh, we dropped some stuff at the truck. We can't load it. I need another three or four um, pieces of, of three and a half inch, for example. You can walk over here, interrupt it, and very easily, hey, go ahead and I'll put a very high priority. That's the magic of an optimizer. You put a high priority on a certain number, and the machine will hunt for that if you put a really high priority that's all the machine will cut but it's all about playing with your numbers and letting the machine do do the thinking basically and, and i know we've been talking a lot about just operation and capacity but the other thing is maintenance and while there's not a lot of maintenance to the machine keeping it clean is very important uh there, there is a little brush wheel that we can't visually see but actually tries to keep the chain clean uh, in addition you always want to make sure you have a little bit of a residue some oil residue down there uh, you'll probably, depending on if it's an eight-hour shift, you might have to refill the reservoir about once a month or so. Uh, but just you want to make sure that there's plenty of, you have a little bit of oil there. Um, is there any additional maintenance, Kyle, that you would refer to? Uh, brass bushing. The here. brass bushing, yes. Here. Here, we'll jump in real quick. Um, the, the moving blades, there is a little bit of maintenance inside there. If you're running the machine, I think four hours, we have a customer in Thomaston, Georgia, Danny's, that does a tremendous amount of doors. He got, I think, about eight years out of the first bushings, running it four hours a day. Uh, that's something you just talk to our guys up here, the tech support, the diagnostics. Those guys are fantastic. I, I think we have over a 1,000 of these machines in the United States now. When you call up here, they're going to walk you through it very quickly over the phone. And by the way, that service is, is uh, built in. You know, you're not paying. We don't do an annual service maintenance contract. We don't play those games with our customers. You just call in and say, hey, my spikes are bad or my brass bushings. They give you the part number. They transfer you over to the parts department. The parts are on the way the next day or the same day. Right. Right. Well, the, the brass bushes we're talking about right now are on the moving blade. Right. But again, technical nuances. Are we close to running a board? All right. It's going to get a little noisy in here. Sound like an aircraft carrier. Yeah. The end feed. Yeah. So we've got, we've got, um, some softwood over here, some red oak and some poplar. Um, again, like, like Heath mentioned earlier, we can, we can really move the lasers and the blades anywhere you want. If you want to center, for example, these knots in a cut, or if you want to cut through it, it's completely up to you and your operator. There we go. Start her up. So again, he's going to introduce the blade, excuse me, introduce the board. He's now he's pushed his feed motor on tracks going. He's on the automatic mode, so now it just takes a measurement. The, the operator can actually override, if he doesn't like the uh, solution, the, um, the operator can override the solution, and the machine will memorize the new solution. The two do joysticks that are on the uh, front of the control panel, that's what those are for. You can move the blades, or you can override. When you're running FAS, there's very little overriding. When you're running number one, you might override 30%, 40% of your boards. When you're ru running number two, or some customers call it crate boxing better, you're going to be overriding a lot. So it just depends on what you're running and what you're doing. Uh, standard machine, by the way, is uh, two and a half inches thick. Uh, you don't have to take the pressure board off. If you do run thicker, you've got to run the pressure. You've got to take the pressure board off up to, I believe, the quote will say uh, three and a half. The machine is here on the floor. Uh, we're in Mooresville, North Carolina. So no matter where you are in North America, if you'd like to send some material and come down here and uh, run the machine yourself, you're more than welcome. Now he's putting in the second board. This is a red oak, a little bit wider. Machine took his measurement, made his, made his best decision. Okay, Kyle overrode it. He went ahead and went a little bit wider. There we go. And if you'll flip a board over, you can actually see the, uh, the spikes, and they're, they're barely noticeable, especially on the camera. You're barely going to see the spike marks. 
Uh, but that, again, prevents any lateral. That's from the sawmill, actually. But um, the, the, there's a spike. The spikes are barely noticeable. But the next, the next uh, process, sanding or running it through your molder, the next process will always take those out. Uh, we've also, while he's on this end of the machine, we've got another emergency stop, and he's got an outfeed roller. This is, used to be an option, a $1,000 option, but we've included this because uh, what happens is a lot of customers will leave an op- will leave a operator by himself to do this, and if the material is coming out of the machine and there's nobody standing back here, the bunk can fill up and, and the, the, boards, the end of the boards can start hitting the chain. So just to take that off the table to make it easier for the customers and the operators so they don't have to think about this, we just added the outfeed roller, a driven outfeed roller. So, yeah, every board is different uh, based on your cut list, just-in-time manufacturing. One more. Okay, here he goes. One more. This one's got some. This one. Yeah, he, Heath just brought up a really good point. Um, we've got accessories depending on your volume. What the uh, industry averages are. When, the, when we have a lot of consultants that will come in here and pick our brains, or you can bypass that. It's completely up to the user, the company. But some companies, especially larger companies, like to have a third person a, a, an independent uh, look a fact checker so the um, the uh, consultants will come in here and they'll um, they'll do their own time studies that's a very big thing with six sigma these days they're going to want to do a time study on a hand-fed machine you know two three up to five boards a minute assuming the boards are about 10 foot long two three four five boards a minute is fairly common throughout the industry if you want to get to the next level we have a compact in feed and so when the, the operator is actually moving the next board, putting it up, the machine is measuring and self-feeding it. Then you can get up to the seven, eight, nine boards. If you want to go to the next one above that, we've got a couple other systems that are bigger, even with vacuum lifts. I saw one up in Indiana last week or a couple weeks ago. Uh, we have a new one in Indiana with one of our vacuum lifts taking off a stack every, I think it was about every 15 seconds. But that's, what would that be, six boards, eight boards every 15 seconds. So we can go off the chart with this technology depending on what you need. Most customers, I would say 80% of my hardwood customers, and these aren't the two-man shops, but I'm saying the uh, the five-man and above shops, most customers need something like this that can produce 10, 15, 20,000 board feet a day. Footprint also fits in the shop. It's one port, which is very important. It's only one port um, dust collection. We've got a, uh, I think it's a nine-inch or 10-inch pipe. Um, some of the other machines on the market, you'll notice they have another pipe down here and they have a pipe on the end, and that goes back to the closed chain. When you have extra pipes, well, now you just you have to have more CFM, so there's a higher cost to run brand X or brand Y. Uh, that's, a, that's a small note. But the bigger note is they're going to have crap on their chain coming back and getting embedded in the races and the sprocket, and that's the biggest point. Our machine's clean. It's well thought out. One dust collection port. And again, like I said earlier, uh, only a one horsepower feed motor. So you start adding up the differences over the life of the machine. These are huge differences. Um, also on the infeed, we've got the, uh, the Timber Max. Um, the Timber Max will be measuring one board. So you put the first board in, it'll measure it and then move it over. It's got 17 uh, laser lights. The 17 laser lights will actually give you the bow. Rip Max, excuse me, misspoke. The Rip Max. So the Rip Max will give you the curvature of the board. So it's a little bit, it's obviously a little bit bigger investment, but the more important point is it's a bigger look at every board. It'll take a picture of every board. With that data, you can get, you can get a um, width distribution. So when you're talking to supplier A, supplier B, supplier C, you can go back to your suppliers and you can say, hey, you said there was X amount of feet. There was 14,000 feet on that truck. Here's the boards. I, I, I got board by board, and you can fact check them and say, hey, guys, it was only 12,800. I know you got the 3% rule, plus or minus, but if they're outside that 3% rule, you know, you need to tell your suppliers. And, and a lot of customers say, I could really grade my suppliers. I don't mind paying 5% more if I am getting 8% more yield. So knowledge is power. This technology will give you a lot of knowledge. What else? No, this, yeah, great information, Christian. So and you guys, thank you for, for watching. And just to really close, um, if, if you haven't reached out to Christian, he's been just a phenomenal asset to the company. Uh, you know, not only supporting the Weinig and Holzer brands, but he, he brings a lot of knowledge to the industry. So thank you for that, Christian. Uh, but, but also, just to wrap things up and to, to bring you a little more, um, there is some software information, some tools out there for simulation. So if you want to get an idea of what your yield could possibly be, 
we can do this just in technology now. We don't really have to use your boards. Granted, I think you bring in your material in here and doing some time studies is a valid, valid request. We can actually do simulations uh, just on a computer now. So within a couple of days, we can give you a, a better idea on what your yield might be with this type of machine or a three blade movable or a four blade uh, and et cetera. So there's some great opportunities. Can I add one more thing? Yep. Let me add one more thing real quick. I forgot to mention um, the simulations here at Mooresville. If you want to send in a cut list and some boards, we can run simulations and we can compare very quickly between a 12 inch fixed arbor, 12 inch one moving blade, 12 inch two moving blade. This will normally get you from the 50, 55, 60% on the fixed arbor. One moving blade will get you in the 70s, but usually on architectural millwork, on cabinetry, we get with this technology right here, we jump customers up into the 90, 92% is very common, and that's including the curve. But the point is, if you're spending, if you're investing 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month in lumber, and we can drop that by 10 or 15%, all of a sudden the payback is less than a year, which is pretty typical. Some customers are still cutting on a straight line, so it's not going to be that big. The labor is going to be the bigger payback. But if you're cutting on a fixed arbor 12 hardwood, this needs to be your next investment because it's the fastest payback. Cut your labor in half and you drop your previous yield by 15 to 20%. Yeah, thank you, Christian. Um, did you want to share anything about your territory? What's going on in your territory, Christian? Well, I've got the best territory in the country because Georgia and South Carolina pretty much carry the South. We all know that, but uh, no, I'm kidding. No, we're very lucky to have great customers. We have a lot of customers, my father, my brother, uh, going back 40, 50 years. Uh, they're solid. You get to know their families, the whole nine yards. But we're very blessed and very lucky. Uh, I've known some of these people my whole lives, and, and I thank God every day for them. No, thank you again. And Kyle, thank you for your help back there. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And with all that being said, have a great day. Good seeing you guys. Take care.